Good morning. My name is Algernon Cash. I am the uh, director of the Triad Food and Beverage Coalition. First of all, just want to thank um, everyone for making time to be here with us today and for joining us um, for what we believe is a very important event and uh, an important call to action. Um, the Triad Food and Beverage Coalition came together to promote a healthy food and beverage community by providing members with strategic programming, uh, marketing assistance, operational support, and direct input on governmental affairs and administrative public policies that encourages regional economic growth. Our advocacy efforts are done in coordination with the Independent Restaurant Coalition on the national level and North Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association on the state level. We have been highly active working alongside local elected officials as they navigate an unprecedented health and economic crisis. I also wanna make sure I recognize a few of our leadership committee members that are part of this press call, Claire Calvin from The Porch, Jordan Kuyper is on the call from Providence Restaurant, as well as Dave Nicoletta, who owns a restaurant in Kernersville, as well as High Point. So truly, we are a triad uh, regional coalition. We also strategically partner with other local associations, such as the Winston-Salem Barters Association. I wanna recognize Tiffany Howell, who's on the call as well, who is the head of the Winston-Salem Bar Association. And we have been a supporter of the North Carolina Bar and Tavern Association and their statewide effort to help struggling bar owners. Um, small independently owned restaurants are facing an extinction level event as we move deeper into colder months and the coronavirus spread reaches all time highs. Over 75% of the North Carolina's 19,504 eating and drinking locations are in danger of closing permanently without immediate financial support. Food services account for 8.7% of all employment in North Carolina. A large majority of the state's food and beverage industry workers remain unemployed and now facing eviction, food shortages, and other critical needs. Restaurants generate a large portion of North Carolina's revenue. Food services contributed 16% of the state's sales tax revenue at a time when our state may be facing nearly a $4 billion deficit going into next year. We are not in a position to continue losing critically needed revenue that finance a wide range of public services, including healthcare, transportation, and public safety. In low-income communities and food deserts, such as East Winston-Salem, restaurants feed around 50% of the entire neighborhood. So this is a critical and essential industry that contributes significant value to our community. And today we are calling on Congress to pass the Restaurants Act immediately or we may never fully recover. With all that said, I would like to pass um, on to uh, Mayor Alan Joins from the city of Winston-Salem. Well, good morning, everyone. It's my honor to be a part of this uh, virtual press conference with uh, my colleague mayors from all across the triad that you'll hear from uh, going forward this morning. Uh, Algernon certainly hit it right on the head that the, it's a critical time for our small businesses here in the triad and really across the state, particularly the next five months for for our restaurants as we go through the cold winter months. Um, there are a number of initiatives that are underway, uh, and we're gonna talk basically about restaurants this morning, but before I jump into that, I did wanna mention a particular initiative that will help restaurants and help all of our small businesses. It's called Triad Together that's been put together by leaders in both uh, Greensboro High Point and Winston-Salem, whereas business leaders, a thousand business leaders are being asked to commit to spending a thousand dollars in our local economy. And that event is really gaining traction and we're gonna see the results of that uh, coming up very soon. As I said, it's especially critical time for our restaurants. Uh, we've seen, uh, we've done uh, events here in Winston-Salem. I know Greensboro High Point and others have done events to allow restaurants to expand outdoors during the summer and, and warm fall uh, season, which has helped quite a bit. But of course, now we're getting into the cold weather and the restaurants won't be able to do that. So we've got to figure out a way to help. My, my mantra is help them make it to May, make it to May. How can we do that? First of all, you as citizens can come out and support the restaurants with your presence. You can eat in or take out. Our restaurants are all following the safety guidelines and protocols established by the Department of Health and Human Services for the state, so you can feel safe in doing that. Uh, that will help a, a great deal. But the second thing, as Algernon alluded to, is I'm asking you to call or write or text Senator Burke, 
our local senator, and asked him to support Senate Bill 4012. Senate Bill 4012. That's the restaurant bill that Al Janan referenced that provide direct financial assistance to our restaurants. Folks, can you imagine waking up in uh, February or March or May and, and finding that our city is without 75% of our unique restaurants? Uh, they really add to the fabric, to the uh, character of our cities, and we have to support them, in my opinion. And now, right now, is the time to act. We've got to help them make it to May. Uh, that's the, our strategy. As you can see, all of our triad mayors are in sync in this regard because we see it as a, a joint effort, a joint impact on our triad. Coming after this, you will start seeing uh, public service announcements uh, being made on uh, supporting our restaurants. Uh, our city, and I know the other cities that are represented today are looking at other ways that we can support our restaurants with some unkind, uh, in kind ways of helping, I guess. Uh, and uh, we're going to be looking at additional business support, just like the thousand leaders that are committing to a thousand dollars. We're going to be looking at other ways of doing that. So I uh, appreciate you all joining this morning, and I hope that you will help us help our restaurants make it to May. And with that being said, it's my honor to uh, recognize uh, now Mayor Nancy Vaughn, wonderful mayor of the city of Greensboro. Nancy. Thank you, Mayor Joins. It is my pleasure to be here in support of Senate Bill 4012. You know, one thing that makes our communities great is that many of our restaurants, there are small local establishments, they're mom and pops, and they have really carried the burden of COVID um, extra heavy. They were shut down through no, no fault of their own, and we need to do what we can to make sure that they stay whole, that they, um, that they continue with their employee base. When, when we talk about restaurants, we're talking about more than restaurants. There is a ripple effect. Um, restaurants, you know, they support um, linen rentals, florists. Um, all different types of businesses. So when we see a restaurant go out of business, it doesn't just impact that restaurant, that family, those employees. It impacts businesses across our community. So as we preserve one business, we are looking at preserving many businesses. The city of Greensboro is really built on hospitality. We have got some great venues, such as the, the Coliseum, Piedmont Hall, and the um, Aquatic Center, and the Tanger Center, which is yet to open. It, it closed on opening night. These were all events that restaurants relied on, that they knew when there was an event at the Coliseum that they were gonna get lots of diners, that they would have a lot of visitors through their, through their restaurants. All of these event spaces have been shut down since March, and it does, we don't know when they'll be open again. Um, just this past uh, yesterday, just yesterday, we had to cancel a soccer tournament that was going to be out at Bryan Park because they would not be able to socially distance. So we know that our restaurant workers are being impacted in so many different ways that was through no fault of their own. They really do add to the fabric and flavor of our local communities. So I wholeheartedly support Senate Bill. 4012. And I hope that um, people across North Carolina will reach out to our senators and ask them to do it with haste because this is so, so important. And right now, I would like to turn it over to Mayor Newell Clark of Lexington. Thank you, Mayor Vaughn. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. And Mayor Joins, thank you, sir, for being on the call with us today. And Mayor Valtunas, I'll turn it over to you here in a moment. But uh, I, again, uh, echo my previous colleagues that I am on the call in support of Senate Bill uh, 40112 or 12. And really, it's one of those things, I guess, in a way, I'm, I'm representing some of the smaller communities in, on this call. And we talk about how these restaurants, these mom and pop privately owned restaurants make up about 75% across the triad of our uh, restaurants. And I just will share a few other numbers here in Lexington. Uh, our Main Street, we're part of the North Carolina Main Street organization. And 
we have about a 4% vacancy on our main street in terms of businesses. And of those, quite a few of those are restaurants. And all of those are mom and pop, privately owned. You, in a six block radius, you will not see a, a chained national restaurant that is there. I've gotten call after call after call for help and assistance. And fortunately, being a small community, a lot of these restaurants do get help from some of their landlords. But uh, this time that we're getting ready to go into during the winter months is going to be very difficult for these. And when we talk about a small community like Lexington, that we are always striving to be a good triad neighbor and to provide another alternative to our bigger brothers and sisters uh, of our metro areas. Uh, this is the this is the backbone for us as a community. I don't have to speak about it, but I, I'm going to being the mayor of the barbecue city. Uh, <laughs> I can't can't pass that up. But uh, I can tell you that even our barbecue restaurants, which historically have just been uh, a monster for this community, they are hit hard. Uh, they they were already set up to do curbside and takeout. Uh, that was something that was not unusual for them. But a lot, several of our restaurants were doing uh, you know, only 30, 40 percent, and that was good uh, for restaurants. And and but that was way down from what they're doing. And this this Senate bill, this help. As a small community, we know we can't do it by ourselves. And to reach out to our senators and our federal government and asking them for assistance, it's needed during this time. It's, um, we've got several uh, breweries that have just opened up. Uh, one opened slight, right before the pandemic, uh, very similar to Mayor Vaughn, the Tanger Center. They, uh, we had a, a unique name. It's called the Goose and the Monkey Brew House. Uh, but they literally opened up, and that week they had to shut right back down. And uh, it's a wonderful addition that we have here in Lexington and the triad and it's down in our depot district and they're they're bringing it back slowly but uh, they need all the assistance they can get we've got quite a few uh, new uh, minority owned restaurants that are trying to open even during this pandemic and it's um, it's been very difficult and they're constantly asking for assistance and we are going through different programs ourselves working with our county commissioners uh, through some cares dollars uh, that we can try it, it but that runs out really quickly so collectively the more we can work together uh, the better um, and again I'll, I'll echo what I I've seen across the triad and we put on uh, the lingo, single largest one day event in the state and that is the Lexington barbecue festival and attracts about 180,000 people to the city of Lexington on one given day that was canceled this year for the first time in 35 years and for us in Lexington, need alone the triad in general, but for us, that's a $9 million impact uh, for our local economy when we have to cancel events like that. And it just ripples across uh, a lot of our uptown restaurants. They look forward to that, those festivals, those Main Street festivals. And those are those, are those events that kind of get them through. Uh, we've had to cancel Christmas open house and uh, our Halloween boo bash and others. Uh, and, and not unlike our other colleagues across the, the triad in terms of what they've had to do in terms of canceling. But my point is simply this. We need help. We need assistance. And we need our federal government to pay attention to, to Main Street, what is happening on the smaller Main Streets across the nation. And when you have a, a number that, that assists in sales tax revenue that we know is going to be down, our restaurants are so vital. They, they can provide takeout, as Mayor Joins mentioned earlier, all of those things that are uh, conducive for the pandemic, takeout, pickup, uh, drive through, all of those sort of things we can continue. But we urge everyone to support our local businesses, our local restaurants. And it is, uh, Mayor Vaughn, you were right on when you said it's such a ripple effect. Uh, I think a lot of times when uh, a lot of, if we're asking something from the federal government, sometimes it seems like a single shot that we're asking, but this is something that will affect not only restaurants, but uh, ancillary supporting businesses as well. So it's the right thing to do. And I thank you all for being on the call today. And I get the opportunity to pass this to my friend and fellow mayor, Mr. Uh, mayor Baltunas from Burlington. Good to see you, sir. Thank you very much, mayor. Well, it's good to be with all of our other triad mayors. I'm Mayor Ian Baltudis. I serve in the city of Burlington, and we look at ourselves as a bridge community between the triad and the triangle. Um, I'm going to echo a lot of what 
the mayors before me have said, we are all in similar situations and are getting similar feedback from our restaurateurs across our community. Here in Burlington, we're, we're seeing strong recovery in, in many sectors across our city, but the restaurant, the service, and hospitality sectors are not seeing that. And that's particularly alarming, as mentioned by previous mayors, because many of these restaurants are minority owned. They are the anchors of our downtown, our main street, our neighborhood business districts, and our corridors. Uh, they add, as, as Mayor Vaughn put it, the flavor of our community. And uh, those are emerging leaders in our cities who are helping to revitalize challenging parts of our, our city. Uh, and they've stepped up early on in the pandemic to help with feeding programs, to, to make sure that the citizens most in need in our communities had access to food by leveraging the resources that they had as restaurateurs, um, when grocery stores were seeing bare shelves. These are folks who care deeply about our community, and now they're turning around and asking us for that, that extra bit of help to help them get through this, this very dry, cold winter, uh, dry season for, for their sales. Uh, and this, as again mentioned, is uh, an opportunity for a ripple effect. Uh, for them to be able to continue to support all those businesses that work with them day in and day out. Uh, and so this piece, Senate Bill 4012, is absolutely essential to making sure that we have a recovery that is equitable all across our communities and our region. So um, our council stands behind it in our, our ask to our federal government, and we ask our citizens to make their voices heard as well regarding Senate Bill 4012. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to my friend, Alex Sean Cash. Thank you, Mayor Baltitudis. We appreciate you being here as well as all of our, our triad mayors. Um, our mayors have reserved a little bit of time to take questions from the press. Um, please um, leave those questions in the chat section as I see them pop up. Um, I will uh, address them to the appropriate mayor that you would like to, to respond to your question. As you um, attempt to do that or as you, as, you as you attempt to list your questions, I do want to add to the comments that you heard from our triad mayors um, that, that a lot of the comments might be centered on restaurants, but we also fully recognize that our bar community is struggling and really in um, a, a deep depression, similar to what we're seeing in the restaurant community. Here in North Carolina, um, you know, bars have just now been able to operate at a reduced capacity, only outdoors only. Um, and that's just been in the last few months. Of course, restaurants have been able to operate at 50% capacity since around May. So we do want to bring that that into the to the light as well. So um, let me check the chat section, and if I see any questions, we will uh, try to address those. I am not seeing any questions, but we'll give you guys a few more seconds. And um, if there are no questions, we will certainly allow everyone to get back to their day. I will also let everyone know that if you, I know some of the media has reached out about setting up interviews. Um, certainly, I think any one of the mayors would be willing to do so. And we also have restaurant uh, owners that are willing to speak with you as well. So um, I think everyone on the call has my contact information and they could reach out directly to schedule those interviews. Again, I'm not seeing any questions or additional comments pop up in the chat. So I think mayors, y'all must have knocked it out of the park. That was a, that was a great, great commentary. Um, again, appreciate everyone for being here. If you, if you wanna get a video of this, press conference um, that that will be available um, on our Facebook page. It did go out live right now to the page up. Oh, hold on. I did get one question, of course, right here at the tail end. Uh, one of the questions is from, I believe, WFMY. Um, while we're waiting on Congress to, um, to, to pass the Restaurants Act, what are cities doing locally to try to assist restaurants that are in financial need and um, any mayor, you're, you're more than willing to just chime in. I think that's not, I'll start on that. Obviously, from the city government standpoint, there are a few things that we can do to help with uh, uh, regulations to maybe loosen up some of that. But it's a, a main thing that I'm seeing is the uh, initiative right now called a Triad Together, where we're asking uh, business leaders to uh, commit to spending a thousand dollars. But I think anyone can join in that effort. It doesn't have to be $1,000, could be $200 that we, we're all making commitments to spend within our local economy, particularly with those locally owned businesses and those mom and pop restaurants particularly, I think is a great way to do that. 
Ab so absolutely, and I would echo um, Alan's comments. We did, we have expanded outdoor space, as you mentioned, but now it's getting cold. So, um, you know, we're looking at a variety of other ways that we can assist businesses, such as waving um, on street parking or parking in, in parking decks so that um, it will make um, all areas of the city competitive with those who have, you know, front of door parking. Um, you know, the majority of the, all of the CARES Acts went to our county and the county did do some, um, they did offer some relief for local businesses, um, but directly the city didn't get those, the CARES funding. Mayor Clark or Mayor Baltudas, would y'all like to chime in on that question or all or? Sure. The, um, and, go ahead. Go ahead, Mayor. Yeah, and Mayor. In Burlington, we've uh, had a very strong kind of liaison team with our staff uh, that have been able to stay in touch with business owners all across our community throughout the pandemic. And that's been critical for us as we've developed a, a toolbox of grants and loans and other uh, flexibility within our city ordinances to meet the diverse needs of our different restaurateurs around the community. And so uh, we do have some grants available. We do have some loans. We've been able to increase uh, street availability for outdoor dining. Um, but those don't work for everyone, and there are, are new challenges as this pandemic drags on, and that's really what this bill addresses. Mayor Clark? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just locally, a few things that we've done to, to address directly. As I mentioned before, we're part of the North Carolina Main Street uh, organization. Our uptown organization put together a loan program to help some local businesses, and particularly restaurants, uh, and, and that's been something that's been ongoing. And uh, again, that's a, just a small portion of the community. However, uh, we were able, as I mentioned before, we're uh, working with our uh, commissioners, some of the CARES money that came through. Uh, we're directing folks to there. And then one other thing that it's, a, it's something we're able to do, uh, Lexington is a public power city. We're a part of, uh, High Point is a part of the same group as us with Electric Cities. And we've actually, because with our customer service, we've actually been making individual phone calls. Uh, to businesses and even citizens uh, to just call and say, how are you doing? Uh, are you okay? And just that line of communication to just touch base and see where their needs are. And in a big way, we've, we've been kind of being a traffic cop of saying, okay, well, here's where you need to go. This is available. So just trying to do the best we can to get the information out there. Thank you, um, um, all triad mayors. This next question is actually just for Mayor Jones and Mayor Vaughn. It says, how will the city of Greensboro and city of Winston-Salem counteract the impact of the pandemic as we continue giving breaks to chain stores or large businesses? Um, I'm not sure exactly what, what reference to breaks to chain stores. Uh, I think we with city of Winston-Salem, and I'm sure Mayor Vaughn would agree, are committed to our, our local businesses. We've had a small business loan program in place since 1985. And, when the pandemic, pandemic hit, we suspended all payments of, of small business loans, which a number of them are restaurants, uh, for six months. Uh, we also created a, uh, a $4.5 million fund made up of a million dollars from the city and 3.4, uh, excuse me, 3.5 million that were raised from the community that we made grants to nonprofit organizations that would help uh, uh, employees who were displaced uh, from restaurants and, and otherwise lost a lot of hours. So we're continuing to try to do that. Our Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown Winston Southern Partnership created a small business uh, grant program. I think we, they raised about 350,000. They were able to help with that. So I think we are very, very committed to helping our small businesses, uh, particularly our locally owned restaurants. And again, I'll have to echo a lot of what Alan said, that we we did give money um, to the United Way to help our restaurants and small businesses. This is not just about um, restaurants, as we said earlier, but there are an awful lot of small businesses who have been negatively um, impacted. And so you know, we, um, we have invested with the Piedmont Business Capital, the Chamber of Commerce, and other venues that would help deploy those resources. So the city has been a partner in recovery since day one. Thank you both mayors. And this is our final question and then we will, um, we will end the call. Um, the the 
um, other question that I'm seeing is related to the MERS grant that was issued by the state. Apparently, there's been a lot of uh, restaurants and bars that are struggling to get through that process. Um, have any of the mayors been notified of these issues, and are they working with the state to uh, correct any of those issues? And I, I mean, if any mayor can chime in where you where you would like, but. The one thing that I heard was that there was a short deadline and that people didn't hear about it um, timely enough to be able to apply. So perhaps um, if there's more funding and it could be opened up a little bit and advertised a little bit more, people would be able to take advantage of it. I have not heard directly of complications through the process. Understood. I have not heard either, uh, but I think, uh, I'm not speaking for all my colleagues there, but I'm sure we would uh, be happy to join together in a letter uh, to the state, uh, just making those suggestions that Mayor Bond just made. All right. Well, again, thank you everybody for your time. Again, if you would like to set up any one-on-one -on -one interviews, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help coordinate that. If you want more information about the Restaurants Act, we have a lot of information about the House and the Senate bill. The House bill has passed. The Senate bill is, is not hit, hit committee. Um, we also can provide you with a lot of facts about the rest, restaurant food and beverage industry here in North Carolina. Um, so if you need additional information for follow-up, please reach out to me and we are happy to um, oblige your request. Again, thank you all for your time. Um, this video and recording will be available on our Facebook page. You can go certainly share that with other people. And um, again, really appreciate all of our triad mayors coming together, uniting and calling on Congress to pass the Restaurants Act immediately. Thank you all. Thank you.